Today I'm going to give you an up-close personal tour on the inside of this A-Star helicopter. Hi, I'm Rick James from The Pilot Teacher and today we're going to go and look at the A-Star that I'm currently flying. Uh, many people always ask me like, hey, what does it look like inside? Well, today we're going to go and have a look, so let's go see. So this is the inside of the A-Star B2 from Eurocopter or now Airbus. Um, it is a six seat helicopter. Um, the right seat here is where I sit, passenger, and four passengers across the back. Uh, unfortunately, if I get four big dudes in there, I feel really bad because it's like they're, they've been shoehorned in and they're sitting there basically sitting ass cheek to thigh, which makes me smile, but hey, it is what it is. Um, each one has their own seatbelt and their own headset and each one can communicate with me just by using the little push to talk buttons that are on the drop cords there. And it's, uh, it's like using a radio or walkie talkie. Press and hold whilst you talk, release it to hear, uh, and that way then I can hear them. The reason why we have the little push to talk buttons, which is there, is if the headsets are up like this when I'm flying, their mics would be on and the constant rattling of their drop cords and their microphones drives me nuts. So all the utility helicopters have the push to talks in the back, otherwise you're gonna sit there for an hour in a flight and stuff's rattling away in your headset and it drives you bonkers. So that's the back seat. Um, in the A-Star we can fold these seats up. So we've got a life jacket under there. We can fold these seats up, fold them flat just like you can in the back of your truck. Um, so it allows me to put cargo in the back here which uh, works really good especially if I'm like repositioning the machine or something like that. Um, I can put in all the operations gear and the spares and things like that. Um, load the back up, close the doors. So one of the things that's unique to the A-Stars, and it's kind of a pain in the rear, is this black panel here. And what it's for is it's covering a window. So let's go and have a look and I'll show you what it's for. So here you can see we've got the panel open and we've got a window. So if we look underneath, we've got a window in the belly of the aircraft. And what this is for is when I'm doing an external load. So basically when I'm lifting up something on the hook, I can see down to the load so I can see where it's going to go when I pick it up and I drop it off. Um, it's unique to the A-Stars just because we have such a wide area between the edge of the seat and the edge of the fuselage. Um, some helicopters you can actually stick your head out or take the door off and you can see vertically straight down the outside. A-Stars we can't, we have to look through the slinging window and it takes some practice because you can't see very much you have a lot of blind spots around here and around here when the doors closed this bit has a blind spot here you have the door post here which creates a blind spot so it's it's a challenge and it takes some practice to get used to but um, the other thing we've got in there is the screen there so let's go and show you what the screen does so now you have the view that i get when i am slinging Basically, I'm looking down from my seat and that screen at the moment is showing me my torque gauge and it's pretty cool. It's just a little camera up here, so there you, go, you can see my fingers and it's just replicating this screen right here. Uh, what I can also do is switch the camera to my NG gauge and as we can now see, I've now got my NG gauge replicated. You can see my fat fingers there. Um, so it allows me to see the power when I'm pulling so I can keep my head looking straight down the hole rather than bringing my head up and looking at the instrument panel. So it, uh, it's really cool. It really, really helps a lot. So the instrument panel and the A-Star helicopter, it's, uh, it's very simple. It's what we call has steam gauges, which are analog gauges a lot of the modern helicopters now have what we call a glass cockpit which is glass video screens that have all the information presented on a screen but this is the old style so what we're going to do is we're going to start at the bottom we'll work our way up and we'll just go through what everything does so at the bottom here we have a switch panel 
and what the switch panel does is it just turns on all the electrical items so it turns my fuel boost pumps on and off it turns my lights on and off um, it turns my instruments on and off um, so that is the switch panel just operates all the electrical items on the aircraft in front of that we have an FM radio so if I'm working out on a wildfire and I'm talking to my forestry crews on the ground I can talk with them using the FM radio here um, same if I want to talk with guys when I drop them off and they've got a handheld radio that's the radio the FM radio that I use to talk to them this guy here is called the communications panel and what it does is it allows me to select which radio I'm going to be talking to when I press the trigger on the cyclic. Um, according to Hollywood when you press the trigger on any Hollywood movie you fire guns and rockets in real life that's BS. You press the trigger you're talking to air traffic control or you're talking to the guys on the ground and it works just like a normal radio. Press and hold the trigger in whilst you talk release it to listen. So. I wish I had guns sometimes, but <laughs> I don't. So the trigger fires the radio that I've selected. So if I want to select the FM radio, I select FM1. If I want to select the um, COM radio, I select COM1. Same with the satellite phone, uh, which leads me on to this. So this is our satellite tracking unit. Um, so when I'm flying along and the aircraft is on, uh, my company can see the position of my aircraft at any time on their monitors back in head office this also incorporates the satellite phone so if i have a problem i can basically switch my selector panel over dial in the number and i can talk to an engineer or somebody that is on the ground whilst i'm flying next unit here is called a transponder and what that does is it allows air traffic control to see me on their radar screen in the tower so what they will do is they will give me a code when i call them um, before lifting off and at the moment my last flight they wanted me to squawk four five seven four so that way then on their screen it shows up as my aircraft on their screen so when we've got multiple aircraft flying around they give each one of us a different code and it differentiates us from just a blip on their screen to the actual aircraft Above that we have the um, VHF radio and this is the radio that I use to speak to air traffic control and other aircraft around flying in the air. So as I'm flying along, tower's got a different frequency. Um, when I'm flying around in a busy area north of here, they've got its own air to air frequency. So I'll switch between those frequencies. So this is the radio that I use to, air traffic con to talk with air traffic control. This is the radio that I use to talk to crews on the ground. So as we come along, we've got this bank here and I basically have my fuel pressure. So when I've got my engine running and I've got my electrical boost pumps on, they are two electrical pumps that sit in the bottom of the fuel tank and push fuel up to the engine. So that shows me my fuel pressure going to the engine. Below here, I have my engine oil pressure gauge, which is very important because this engine does not run very well without oil. Um, if I lose my pressure there, I'm heading to the floor. So very important gauge. Here is my engine oil temperature. Same thing. My engine oil is getting too cold or too hot. Um, I need to land to basically sort it out. And then below that we have our ammeter. So uh, the generator that's on the engine produces electrical power to run all this. So it's not running off the battery. Um, I can keep an eye on the current draw for the generator. So um, if I have a short circuit or anything like that and it's drawing too much current, I can see that in there and then I can start turning off the individual electrical uh, devices to see which is the one that's faulty and is drawing too much current. So from there we come over to my um, external load or my water bucket switch. So uh, whenever I am flying with an external load, let's say a water bucket on a wildfire, <laughs> we have fuel drums here that sit out and they're empty. And when they heat up in the sun, they just expand and make big bang noises. So that's what that was. That one actually made me jump. Um, so yeah, so when I want to operate my water bucket on the cyclic here, when I filled up and I want to actually drop the water, I'm going to press down on the little button here 
if this is not activated, it won't let me release the water. So that's just what that is for. Here we have a stopwatch. Every pilot needs a stopwatch. You need it for monitoring how long you've been flying for, how long you're going from point A to point B. So watch is really important and a stopwatch in the aircraft is also really important. Above that we have our ELT switch. So in the back of the aircraft we have our emergency locator transmitter and what that does is if it detects a hard impact in the event of an aircraft crash it automatically sends off your distress signal with your GPS coordinate attached to it. So that goes up to the emergency services um, search and rescue uh, satellite and they know exactly where you are. So most of the time this just sits in armed but if I've got an emergency I can push that to on and then bing my position is given away straight away so it's it's nice to have. As we come across the top here here is our voltmeter this voltmeter basically shows me how much voltage is coming out of the generator and also when I turn the battery on it shows me how much voltage I have in the battery so before I start the engine, I want to make sure I'm up at around at least 24 volts. And then when I actually start the engine, that's going to drop. And I want to make sure that I've got at least 15 volts as the generator is turning. Because if there's not enough power going to that generator, the engine's not going to turn over fast enough. And it could give me a bad start or not even start at all. Next to that, we have our fuel gauge. It's in percent so 100 percent in this aircraft is 540 liters so every 10 percent notch is 54 liters um, usually each notch gives me about 20 minutes of flight time so it's easy to do the quick math as I'm flying along um, just to see how much more I've got further to go and how much fuel I've got on board so I know if I've got enough fuel or not next to that is our torque gauge so we have kind of three gauges that monitor the engine and these show me the power that the engine is producing. So I have torque, which is how much, um, primarily how much the engine is producing. We have the T4, which is telling me how hot the engine is getting. And then we have the NG gauge, which is telling me how fast the, um, the engine is rotating. So depending on the flight condition, one of these is gonna be my first limitation. So when I'm flying along, I have to abide by the first limit that I come to, depending on which gauge reaches their limit first. And different weather conditions and altitudes dictate which of these is going to be my first limit. But most of the time, my NG gauge is my first limit that I'm going to be reaching. Um, so that's the one that I primarily fly along to. Next to it here is my caution and warning panel. We have on here orange lights and red lights. Red lights are stuff that I need to react to quickly. So an engine fire, um, a hydraulics failure, a loss of engine oil pressure, stuff that needs to happen now. So if one of them comes on, I'm gonna be starting to head towards the ground because it's a, um, it's a, it's a potentially a major issue. Um, the yellow lights are more cautionary lights. So, um, one of my cargo doors isn't locked properly or I have a, um, a chip on one of the engine chip detectors so it's detected a bit of, bit of metal, um, something like that. So it's something that I need to be aware of and I will just run through my emergency checklist procedure um, to rectify the situation. And a lot of the time it can be just go land and check it out. So after that we've got basically our instruments for flying the aircraft. So this gauge here is basically my RPM gauge and it tells me the RPM of my main rotor and it tells me the RPM of the engine. So generally these two match and they'll, they'll move together as a pair because as the engine speeds up, the rotor speeds up, especially when I'm starting the aircraft. It's my airspeed indicator, it tells me how fast I'm going through the air faster I go sooner we get there just like the speedo on your car next to it is the artificial horizon and this is used more in um, reduced visibility or if I accidentally fly into clouds I can look at this and it basically follows the 
horizon. So the brown represents the ground, the blue represents the sky. Providing I keep this thing level, I'm going to be flying wings level. If I turn to the right, this is going to dictate that. So this gives me a secondary indication if I'm unable to see the horizon out the window. Next to that is my altimeter. This tells me how high I am above the ground. Higher I go, bigger the number gets. Lower I go, lower the number gets. Pretty simple. Uh, below that is our vertical speed indicator. This tells me how fast I'm climbing or how fast I'm descending. Um, so it's good to see. Next to that is a compass. I need to know which direction I'm going to go, otherwise we're going to get lost pretty easy. So between the compass and a stopwatch, you can fly in a direction for X amount of time and you should reach your destination. Next to that is our bank and slip indicator. So as I'm turning the aircraft, this is going to show me how much of a bank I've got. Uh, then the ball shows me how much I'm flying in trim. So if I'm flying along and I'm actually flying like this, the ball is going to be off to the left. So I need to push in left pedal to center me out. Same if I'm going this way. If I need to push in um, left pedal to center, the ball is going to show me which way I need to press on the pedals. Next is my engine alternate air. So I've got the air filter on the top of the engine. If that starts to get clogged because it's really sandy or dusty um, and I get this light come on, it's saying, hey, your filter's too, uh, too clogged. I can lift this up, operate this switch, and it's going to open two bypass doors at the back and it's going to suck air in from under the filter rather than through the filter. So dirty air into my engine is a lot better than no air. So. Um, it's used as a last resort, but air is better than no air because the engine goes quiet and then I'm having to make an emergency landing. So that is the kind of inside of the A-Star, you know, apart from the other little bits, got a GPS up there. Um, that is the interior of the A-Star. So I hope you enjoyed that tour. I love showing people my passion, my profession. Um, not many people get to see the inside of a helicopter. Um, this one's a little bit different compared to the VIP ones. This one is what we call a utility machine. It's not a VIP machine. VIP machines, serious bucks, and they are very luxurious inside. This one, not so much, but it allows me to clean it out easy, gets the mud out easy, and it gets us from point A to point B really well. It allows me to lift their stuff in using sling loads. Um, so that we can lift in their, their quads or their argos or whatever construction materials they want. It's an awesome, awesome utility helicopter. So I hope you enjoyed the tour of the inside. If you did, hit that subscribe button. Um, really appreciate it if you like this channel. Um, the like button, give that a smash. It really, really helps the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell too because um, then you'll be able to tell exactly when all my new videos come out. I try and get one out, come out every week. Um, give me some comments below. Ask me some questions. I love making these videos answering your questions. You give me the inspiration and the ideas to help pass on my knowledge, my experience and my love of aviation. So um, yeah, get into the comments, ask away. We'll get the camera out, we'll get the covers off and we will get your questions answered. So hope you enjoyed that and make sure you check out our other video. We've got some great stuff that I hope you'll like and I'll see you next time.